To get inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame is truly an honor, especially coming from where I come from. To this day, I kind of consider myself a, a diamond in the rough. Sports was the ticket out for me. Growing up in Brewston is, uh, is very country, very rural. First eight years of my life, I didn't have running water. We would go out to my grandmother's, fill up the jugs, and I just remember carrying them back to the house. And I would tell myself, if I can make it from there all the way to the house without stopping, I'm gonna get stronger. That I really didn't know I was doing at the time, but I was building inner strength. When I was young, I saw this Walter Payton autobiography. The way he had talked about his growing up was similar to the way in which I had grown up. All they would talk about is like Walter Payton's work ethic, his work ethic, his work ethic. And I was like, if work ethic is what it takes to get there, then I'm gonna get there because I know that I have it. My eighth grade year, my guidance counselor, she said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, first I want to be a professional athlete. She was like, oh, well, you know less than 1% can do this. And then right at that moment, I said, I guess I'll be in that less than 1% then. When I was 16, an altercation happened. And so we ended up being taken from the home and put in foster care. Chris and Julie Finley were the ones who had taken us in. You know, I'll forever be grateful to them for stepping up and doing what they had done. I didn't come from a family that had a college background. I remember they said that now uh, you were in school, um, focus on your grades, focus on being the best ball player you can be and Don't worry about coming back home. That was the day they dropped me off at Ole Miss. Practice, to me, felt almost harder than games. And when you get on game day, game day, it just, it's fun. <laughs> that junior year, Coach Ed Orgeron calls me to his office and he said, P. Willie, he said, you're gonna be my general of the defense. And I remember saying to myself, like, the time is here now. I said, everything that I've been working for, I ended up having an uh, extraordinary season and I ended up getting um, some accolades. But I was also told that, like, there's no way he can have a better senior year than he had a junior year. One day, I get a phone call uh, from my brother Ori, and he says, um, my brother Dutchess uh, drowned. And I just remember being like, my body just got real light. It just felt like I, like I wasn't even there. My brother was going into his senior year of high school, which he was already getting letters, and I would already knew, I said, man, he gonna be even better than I was. I just remember saying, Lord, I know that my brother Dutchess was gonna have an amazing senior year. And I said, I want to combine the season he would have had and the season I know I'm gonna have, and I wanna play for us both. When the season was over, I ended up doing exactly what they said couldn't be done. I ended up being the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. I went on to be uh, Jack Lambert's Linebacker of the Year, also Dick Bucket's Linebacker of the Year. I just felt like a lot of that season was my brother in me as well as watching over me. This is where it began in the big league <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'll never forget us going out, playing here, and I would just look up at the uh, flag and as the national anthem was playing, I was just picturing him, like, sitting up there watching over and saying, yeah, boy, we here. The College Football Hall of Fame, just to be going in with a fraternity of amazing athletes is truly just unbelievable itself. It makes me smile because it lets me know that, like, even small places got winners, too. When you have a purpose, a vision, and you play with passion, a lot of things are possible.